feedback hours. Dr. Green's principal interest is in brain computer interface. Dr. LeMay's a marriage family cat therapist since 1999. And they have been investigating interpersonal biofeedback. Their system is called off the screen, bringing biofeedback to the tangible. The use of robotic technologies, technologies to enhance emotional investment, general effectiveness of biofeedback. Through the use of a radio controlled robotic device capable of three dimensional movement, quote, patent pending, a unique biofeedback interaction is demonstrated. Okay. Yeah, let's go, go ahead, let's go ahead together. <laughs> Hi, I'm John, and next to me is uh, Dr. Green, and together we have been operating for about eight years. And over the course of that time, we realized that both of us are consummate tinkerers, which means we are the atypical boys with toys. And as boys with toys, we have sat up many nights and tried to come up with what are the most inventive and fun ways to play with our patients and clients. Uh, in the course of that, we have uh, come up with ways of dealing with interpersonal issues. We have done, deal, dealt with a wide variety of psychological issues. And we have found that the cornerstone of what it is that we do and what it is that matters to the client is actually learning how to play in a therapeutic way. This device is actually an outgrowth of that. Uh, we actually stumbled into it in some ways initially. Uh, we wanted something that wasn't tethered or connected to the ground. We didn't want a remote control car. We didn't want an AFX car. We knew that all of those things had been done and we thought, what is going to be striking to a, a kid? Well, something that's not attached and something that a kid could begin to uh, learn to manage over time. At the time that this happened, we had no idea how much prosthetic control we would actually begin to uh, move into. And that was kind of the stumbling that uh, was from one kind of learning to another. Uh, we had a young man in the office one time, and it was developmentally delayed. And he came into the office and flew it out the room, and we were just happy to have the thing go up and down and spin. And uh, Dr. Green walked out uh, to retrieve it and pulled it in, and the young man said, I wanted my dad to get it. And he said something that uh, we thought we wouldn't say to a kid because we didn't want to set them up for failure. We said, well, do it again. To which he did. Two more times. Two more times. <clears throat> what we created is, uh, and, and what we're after, the, the interface section of biofeedback is everything. If you can get a profound emotional investment into the interface, then the training process occurs very smoothly. Uh, it tends to stick. Recidivism is extremely low. So uh, we put a colossal amount of emphasis on the quality of the interface. Uh, and uh, it's something I've been uh, now doing this since 76, uh, and uh, I feel a thousand percent validated that the details of understanding the quality of that interface is huge. So that uh, this is an, out, an offshoot or a product of that. Uh, of the 12 possible movements in three-dimensional space, uh, we have been able to give the human brain six of those, which is colossal. For biofeedback, that's five more types of or true individual control than has been done before. And we're very proud of that. Uh, so what you've got for the first time is as close to the human brain can get to telekinesis as possible today anyway. Tomorrow, who knows? But the experience is one of an emotional attachment. And that's what makes it work. So what you've got is you and that in between is an amazing amount of science but really, emotionally, it's you and that. We call it our UFO. So uh, I don't know if, how far you want to go. I, a little bit of the technology, I guess. Our platform, uh, today we're feeding it through uh, Brain Master, which is a, a solid workhorse that we can do. Um, 
you're uh, <clears throat> running on a Dell dual core laptop, uh, it will not, nothing, anything less than that will simply lock up. Uh, the platform is BioExplorer, it's Windows XP. Um, I don't know how many people here use BioExplorer, uh, but if you do, then you'll appreciate this. The algorithms, the signal diagram has 132 objects in it. Uh, so as far as I know, it's one of the largest done in BioExplorer, which is why it needs a big computer. Um, it runs very smoothly, you'll see that. The mathematics inside the algorithms um, is part of the patent pending. Uh, we had debated how much of this to disclose. I think disclosing a little bit is fun because it should elicit some discussion. Uh, so we are using uh, uh, some very provocative permutations of coherence math. Um, and uh, we are using an 11 stage neural net, which gives us almost a billion possible choices. Uh, the, the computer is designed to work with the individual uh, and find the person and then start the training. The question, what type of training, we're going to try to tell you that. So what we've, uh, Doyle's given us permission. When we're done, we're going to leave. We're going to come back and watch everybody else. It's 5.15. Apparently, we can host, be here. And if you'd like to meet with us, ask questions or try it out, uh, we'll kind of hang out there for as long as what they'll let us. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you something, if you've never experienced something like this, which you, which you haven't, because it's possible, uh, it's well worth it to come by. And at that point, of course, detailed questions will be a lot easier to answer. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's, is there something simple I can answer, or something provocative, um, before we start the demo? No? Let's go, yeah, let's fly, I got it. <laughs> All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Pilot. Mm -hmm. Our uh, test pilot today is uh, Brian, the owner of uh, BMI. 